Hello and welcome to a new video. Today we will talk about Postman and uh, more specific Postman asserts. But before we get into it, I want to show you just... Um, I just started Postman as you can already see on the screen. And just look how many uh, helpful tips it has. I mean, on the right side you can already see a lot of tutorials that are built in. For example, automated testing. Okay. What do you want to test? Uh, writing tests, examples, everything you need is right from the start. I mean, debugging and manual testing. What do you want to learn? Variables, environmental variables, collection, debugging. This app is super user friendly and that's why I love it and I also use it a lot when I test uh, APIs. So. Getting back to our topic today, we have the same uh, endpoint that I used last time, which is uh, football API from rapid, uh, rapidapi.com. We have uh, an actually we have two uh, variables. One is uh, URL, and the second is the fixture ID, which is required by the endpoint. And we have this transport variable. I'm gonna change its current value to test just to show you something. Okay. And then um, where I want it to be, I'll show you as you can see here in the test section. I mean, the request has params, authorization, header, body, prerequisite scripts if you want anything to be executed before your request. And then you have the after execution of the request steps or the testing side all the all the tests that are added here are being used to validate the response body header whatever you want from that request you just made so let's take it from the top one of the most common that i use and uh, of course it's pretty obvious is the status code when you make a request you want to validate a certain status if it's successful 200 um, if it's I, I, mean, I don't know server error 500 404 not found and I'm gonna show you how easy it is also to add it you just as you can already see on the right side you have here the pre-existing and you just have to search it or if you don't want it to add it by hand just status code and you can already see pm.test status code this is the message that will be shown in uh, the response I will show you in just a second and pm.response.toHave status 200 is that easy okay this is the first and now we're gonna move to the second one uh, validating data in the response body well, this is the most common after the status cost because when you make a request you want to validate something you want to see that you're getting I don't know a certain value in the response body in this case I'm gonna leave it like this and we're gonna go through it in a few seconds when I actually run the request the third one is setting a variable with data from the current response as you already saw the transport variable which I predefined in my environment I gave it the current value test 5 in this test what I'm doing is I'm uh, getting a value from the response body and I'm setting it as environment transport variable and this is the location from where I want that value to be set okay now let's move on uh, one of the I think this is the fourth one yes the fourth one is the response time you sometimes want to want to validate that the request doesn't take too long I mean if you take if you run like 10 requests you all want to be in a certain range of time in this case, I've just set the response time to be less than 250 milliseconds. All these requests that you can see here, all these asserts, because these are asserts, 
these are validations on the response body header and um, yeah you can already see them on the right side this is just a few that postman already offers when you just start it for example whatever you want to check as you can already see response time is less than response body is equal to response body json check value for example it can parse uh, json files so it will search for a specific uh, value okay and last but not least important check for a specific header um, I mean, if you're looking for something that you know it's gonna be in the response header, then you can just put the value here and you can validate it. Okay, without further ado, let's just uh, start it. As you can already see, we have a request, we have our response, sorry, response body, we have some headers, okay, over here. And we have the test results okay let's just take them step by step first test that i added was the status code is my status code 200 of course so the test is passed as you can already see here all these test results we will modify them and uh, run them again just to see and just to show you how it will um, appear when it's failed Second was validating data in the response body. Okay, let's just make this smaller. So, what I wanted to validate in the response body was that JSON data, JSON data is the whole uh, response body. Dot API. This is API. Results is one equal to one, and of course it was successful. The validate value successful validate value um, which is the next one is the setting variable with data from uh, current response what i've done here i've took this value dot api dot results dot one and i've set it in my environmental in this transport variable as you can already see before it was test five and now it is one because the test asserted that this value is present in the uh, response body and then it just took the value and set it to my predefined variable okay next one pm.test response time is less than 250 milliseconds as you can already see here response time was 228 milliseconds so of course uh, this test was passed and last but not least uh, is the check for a specific header content type is present and pm.response to have header content type if you look at the headers we have the header content type okay we will change it also to test type test type okay so now we we did two things we altered the status code and we altered the test type if we run it again, as you can already see, you have two fails because this is expected and you can already see how easy it is with Postman to track your test and if something fails, you, you just look it up. It also gives you the assertion error, expected response time, response to have status code 400 but got 200. So you already know if you run a set the whole collection you will have all these details in the results also as you already saw i changed the content type which i'm looking for uh, assertion error expected response rate to have header with key test type because this is what i added here and if we look at the headers that are built in we don't have test key okay Okay, let's just change this to another one, date, for example. And you can already see content type is present. Uh, content type is, let's just change this to more uh, suggested name. Header is present. Yeah. And also let's uh, rechange this one to 200 again. 
then as you can already see status is 200 my value was found my value was set response time is less than uh, 250 milliseconds header is present so everything was really straightforward you don't need any uh, complicated course to learn about tests and you can have let's say 10 requests in your collection and for each one of them I suggest you have at least one or two um, automated automated built-in tests here because it's much easier to run them all at the same at the same time and you don't have to validate them each one of them so you don't have to okay uh, what is this request okay what status code did I get you just have to use this built-in assertion it's really easy so I hope you enjoyed this video uh, stay tuned for the next one bye